Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining us and welcome back to season two of Hidden Treasures, the live show where we take you behind the scenes of the Natural History Museum here in London. As always, I'm your host Connor, and today we're gonna to be exploring the fossil shark collection here at the museum, so very excited to get started with this one. Now, if you've seen the show before, you'll know how it goes, but if not, here's a reminder. Um, this is all for you, uh, what we're looking at, what you're interested in. Uh, if you're watching on live, let us know what specimens you'd like to see up close, and we'll make sure we get to those. We're here for half an hour, as I said, and I've got my phone on me keeping a track of the live chat. So whatever you want to see in the fossil shark collection, let us know. And as always, with every week, we are also joining a museum expert scientist. And today we'll be joining Emma Bernard, who is the curator here in the fossil shark collection. So if you've got questions about sharks and especially fossil and extinct sharks uh, for Emma, please pop those in the chat box soon. We'll come to as many as we've got time for before the end of the show. And actually, I think we should start, get going and uh, meeting Emma. Um, but also make sure you stick around to the end of today's show to find out where we're going to be heading uh, in next week's episode. Sadly, next week is going to be the last episode of this season, of season two. Um, and it will be going out at the same time at 12.30 uh, uh, p.m., British summertime, so make sure you tune in for that. But um, hello, Emma. Hi there. <laughs> <laughs> thanks so much for having us here. How are you doing today? I'm well, thank you. Hope everybody's doing good at home as well. Yeah, me too. Um, so yeah, it would be great to get an idea of what your job kind of entails here as curator of fossil sharks, or is it sharks and fish? What's yeah, it like? Um, all fossil fish, basically. So as a curator, I'm basically responsible for the, um, I like to think of the world's best collection of fossil fish specimens. Yeah. So we've got about 100,000 <laughs> specimens. So I need to know what they are, where they came from, how old they are, and how did the museum acquire them. And as part of that job, I also deal with hundreds of research requests from people all over the world. Um, and basically, they come here to the museum, they look at our collections, or sometimes what I can do is um, take measurements and images of specimens, fire lasers at fossils, which is pretty cool, and uh, basically give, provide that information to them as well. Um, another part of my job is I get to go and travel the world and dig up fossils, Fine. which is pretty um, cool. So I'm living my childhood really dream, cool. which is really great. And um, also um, making sure the collections are accessible. Um, and um, yeah, so part of my research is particularly on fossil sharks. Mm -hmm. I think they're really amazing animals. And uh, basically trying to work out why some of them went extinct and maybe why some of them survived to today. Cool. I mean, so talking to you today is going to help fill in some gaps for some of our longer term viewers because we visited the museum's um, wet fish collection in season one. Uh, and we've also visited like the, um, the fossil prep lab this season and also fossil dinosaurs. So we're kind of in it in between now. We get to bridge <laughs> those gaps with you. So that's super exciting. Um, but before we get into checking out all the cool specimens that are kept in here, I wanted to take a look at the mystery specimen, which I think has been revealed to some people in our in our communities online. So let's get a nice look at that. Um, and for those of you watching along live, get in your guesses as soon as you can for what you think this mystery specimen is, because we'll be revealing at the end of the show what this will be. So you want to stick around to the end for that reveal. Uh, we've actually already had a guess in from oh. someone uh, in advance. They think it could be the tooth of a great being. Oh, wow, that's an interesting guess. <laughs> yeah, it's a great guess. Yeah, and so keep those coming. I think I might see some teeth otherwise right in front of us here. So um, yeah, make sure you get your questions in for Emma and your guesses in for the mystery specimen. But yeah, I'd love to talk about some of the things that we have in front of us now. So yeah, what are these things? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so although I said I do work on fossil sharks, obviously sharks are still around today. So um, often what we end up doing is comparing some of the fossil material with recent material. Mm -hmm. So we've got a few different types um, of shark jaws here from recent sharks. Yeah. Um, so I think this one um, may be familiar to some viewers. Um, so this is from a bull shark. Right. So you can see it's got that stereotypical sort of triangular shape tooth and it's got the serrated edge as well. And it has been known to bite a few members of staff. So, uh, oh, yeah. right. You have to be careful around this one. So this is making me think of when, uh, for those of you who didn't catch the episode in season one, it is all available on Catch Up on YouTube in a playlist. But when we visited the, the wet fish collection, we looked at a jaw of a, of a great white shark. Yep. And I can see on here that it's quite similar in the fact that 
not only can we see teeth on the outside, but also... Yeah, if, if we, I turn that around, yeah. turn yeah. that around, you can see all these teeth on the inside. Now, what's that all about? Yeah, so sharks are um, really famous basically for their teeth, and there's a very good reason for that. Uh, they've got this conveyor belt system of teeth. They're always replacing their teeth. So you can see this is the inside of the jaw. Um, mm. So as this tooth there, and there's one in front, as that tooth falls off, mm -hmm. there's one behind it ready to replace it. Right. So depending on the species of shark, they can replace their teeth every few weeks. Uh, sometimes it might be every few months. It just depends what they're feeding on. So yeah, they've got a basically unlimited supply of teeth. <laughs> right, that's, I mean, that's super cool. Uh, and that actually links into a question that we've already had through. Oh, great. Um, so um, someone asked on Twitter, is the reason we have so many fossil shark teeth, but no shark bones, because sharks only have cartilage and not bones? Yeah, that's a really good it's a great uh, question. Isn't it? Really great question. Yeah. So that one is exactly right, spot on. So sharks are actually fish, um, but they're called the cartilaginous fishes because their skeleton isn't made from bone like you and I. Mm -hmm. It's actually made from cartilage or calcified cartilage. So very similar material to what we might have in our ear um, or our nose. So if you give your ear a bit of a wiggle, it's quite yeah. soft. Yeah. So that doesn't tend to fossilize very well. Right, okay. So so is it just the teeth or are there other parts of a shark's body? Because the cartilage, obviously, yeah, you said it's quite soft, but this stuff here, does this ever get fossilised, the cartilage here? Yeah, we do sometimes get um, the sort of the cartilage that's part of the skull and the jaws preserved and as well as the, um, the rest of the shark. Very exceptional um, mm. and we do have a really good one if you want to have a... Uh, Good example of one like that. Just that would the be corner. really cool. Let's have a look at that in just a moment because there's also something on this table that has caught my eye, which is this big Tupperware box. Yeah. <laughs> so let's bring that actually over here. So what have we got in here? Yeah, so this one is... Oh, yeah. get the lid off. Great. <laughs> uh, this, um, so I mentioned um, sharks got a lot of teeth. They're very famous for it. This is basically a lifetime supply of teeth from one shark. Wow. So oh, this is from one shark would go through this many teeth. Yes, exactly right. So it's actually quite, I can't quite lift it up off the table. Yeah. It's quite heavy. <laughs> uh, but yes, yeah, so this is a lifetime supply of teeth from one shark. So perhaps maybe some of the viewers might want to take a few guesses at how many teeth might be in, in this box. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. So, I mean, I would guess maybe about 5,000 or Ooh, something? Oh, maybe, maybe. Okay. Maybe well, a little higher than 5,000. <laughs> we'll give them a little clue. All right, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, setting another challenge for everyone watching along at home. Mystery specimen challenge, but also how many teeth do a does a shark go through in a lifetime and is represented in this box? Get your guesses in for how many of those there are and we'll come back at the end. Yeah, Yeah. sounds cool. good. On that note, actually, we have another guest for the mystery specimen. Um, from Hannah, who thinks that this could be part of a shark's fin. Oh, shark's fin. Yeah. Oh, that's a good guess. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for that guess, Hannah. We'll come to the mystery specimen at the end. But yeah, did we want to check out that specimen that you mentioned that was really well preserved? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So this one down here. Yes. Um, this this is quite big. Yeah. So it's actually <laughs> been out um, actually for a researcher who's been in the collections recently. Wow. And this one is called Wodnika. Yeah. Um, and this is a shark actually from the UK. So it's found, uh, it was found near Durham. And until this shark was found, wow. it was actually only known from a few of the, um, the teeth and a few of the dermal denticles or basically the shark's skin. And what we've got here is absolutely fantastic. So this is a complete fossil shark specimen that is about 265 million years old. So that's older than the first dinosaurs. Wow. <laughs> so what I think is really cool about this one is that you've got these shell crushing teeth here. Yeah. So these are perfect for crushing and grinding and things like shells right. um, in particular. So not all sharks had sharp teeth? Nope. Yep. Fun fact. Yep. So that stereotypical triangular shaped teeth. Um, not all sharks have them. Some are... Um, great for crushing and grinding yeah. um, up shells and things. So that's it's incredible what... how well those have like preserved. They're so shiny still yeah, as yeah. well. How, how are they so shiny when everything else is kind of dulled and stuff? Um, if you think about our teeth as well, like they're quite shiny as well because of the enameloid and things. So that's exactly the same thing um, here. Um, and then you've got going through and then you've got these fantastic fins. So that iconic dorsal fin yeah. um, along the back. This one has two. You have the tail coming up and around. Wow. And then you've got these, you can 
um, very um, along here, just see a very faint white lines kind of yeah. running across. So that's the spine, basically the vertebral column running wow. through here. And the, yeah, the whole shark is here. This is so yeah. big. And you said this is older than the dinosaurs. Mm -hmm. That's so incredible to see like a, basically a whole a whole life form preserved yeah. like this. So how 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 much older than dinosaurs are sharks then? Yeah, so the first um, evidence of sharks that we can find are some of their dermal denticles, so parts of their skin. Right. Um, and then about 420 million years ago, yeah. so 200 million years before dinosaurs were stomping around up on land, yeah. that is when we can start to find some of the evidence of their teeth okay, in the fossil right. records. So we've got lots and lots of teeth, some of their dermal denticles, and then occasionally, when we're really lucky, we get some uh, amazing specimens like this, this one. So cool. And you said it was from County Durham as well. So I've actually got family that live in County Durham. Are from <laughs> you should County send them Durham. out looking for, uh, for yeah. some extra fossils. <laughs> yeah, well, I wanted to ask, like, is this, is this a common kind of find or is this really quite special? And, and how many fossil sharks can you find in the UK? Is it like a regular thing that people come across? Yeah, so it would be quite unusual for us to find a complete specimen like this. Yeah. Uh, this one was actually found in a quarry. And if you kind of take a closer look at the side, you can yeah. see very, very fine little lines running through, oh, yeah. very much like pages of a book. <laughs> um, so this uh, particular animal was, when it died, it got buried very quickly with lots of other muds and sand and things. And then um, one of the collectors came along and was chipping away at different bits of rock. And basically you can then peel it back and then you, and you, you yeah, basically then found this uh, <laughs> this uh, beautiful shark preserved um, in between the different layers. That is so incredible. Um, we've actually got more guesses in from, from YouTube as well oh. on the number of uh, teeth that we have oh, in this okay, box. Okay, excellent. Um, so Lizzie guesses 20,000. Oh, you're getting more and more. Okay, well, James guesses 10,000. Okay, that's a very good guess. Okay, and Eddie guesses 30,000. Uh, okay. So kind of floating around a similar kind of thing. So keep those guesses in, coming in, and also for the mystery specimen and any questions that you have for Emma. Uh, we're still here for another 20 minutes. Um, I was really interested over there. So you mentioned we saw that not all sharks have sharp teeth. And I've noticed that there is actually a set of jaws on this table. I'm yep. just going to move this back a bit. Um, mm -hmm. And we can have a look at that because I see some teeth in there that aren't exactly sharp. Yeah, yeah so this one's from a recent shark. This is from the Port Jackson shark, um, which if there's any viewers tuning in from Australia might be familiar to some. This is where it's found. Um, at the front, you've got these sharp pointy teeth at the front. So perfect for grasping onto things. And then the teeth at the back, yeah, I can run my finger forward and back really smooth. These are plate-like or crushing oh, teeth. Wow, yeah. So very similar to the Wodnika specimen that yeah. I showed um, over there. So again, perfect for crushing and grinding um, things like shells, mollusks, and maybe the occasional little crab as well. Wow. So that so this this is still live in in Port Jackson in yep. in Australia. Do we have any other like fossils of these flat teeth that we could see? Yeah, we do. Um, actually, I'll show you one of my favourite yes. specimens. That's a really good example of that. I'll just go and grab okay, it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Fantastic. Thank you. So yeah, that, this is so cool. So keep those guesses coming in for the number of teeth that we have. And then also the mystery specimen. We've got some great questions I'll ask Emma when she's back as well. So thank you so much for submitting them. Here she comes with um, another Tupperware box. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, uh, they're actually really good for keeping fossils in. Fantastic. Uh, so this one is one of my favourites for a couple of different reasons. Yes. So this one is from a shark called Hybodus. And right. that's a really common one, um, common shark during the Jurassic period. Right. So that's probably a time period that quite a lot of people at home will be familiar yes, with. Yes, yeah. So it's probably about... Time of the dinosaurs. Time of yeah. the dinosaurs. Forget about them. You've got really <laughs> great, amazing animals that are in the oceans, including this shark here, Hybodus. So this is about 180 million years old. So you've got these long, flat teeth um, here, and this is part of its jaw. Right. So this would have been when the shark actually died, as supposed to just naturally shedding teeth. And what um, is really great about this fossil, um, it's not just about the scientific um, mm -hmm. research that we do here at the museum, but also historical. So this specimen was actually collected and bought um, from Mary Anning. 
Oh, wow. Who's, um, was one of my heroes. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, so she was a famous paleontologist, um, sort of at the turn of the 19th century, mm -hmm. uh, living in Lyme Regis. That's how she made a living, by going out there, finding fossils, um, and some of them made them in, into museum collections. That's amazing. So Mary Anning, um, if people visit the museum in person, there's actually a marine fossil way, which is a, one of the galleries, and there are loads and loads of fossils there that were collected by Mary Anning. And you, this is from, from all from the UK, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. so all, 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 all basically from Lyme Regis, uh, Charmouth, that Dorset, the famous Jurassic Coast yeah. down there. Yeah, so that's super cool. So not only are those, because those all like, um, like reptiles in that gallery. So she, so she not only found those, but also sharks as well. Yeah, that's incredible, fantastic. Actually, we've got another question talking about Jurassic Coast and stuff. So another question through on YouTube. So if sharks have been around for so long, even longer than the dinosaurs, what's made them so efficient at like evolving and surviving throughout the decades? Yeah, so millennia. A, <laughs> yeah, so that's a really great question. So overall, we think there's probably been about 5,000 different species of shark that's ever existed. Right. So some of them have lived for very short periods of time. Some of them have lived for much longer periods of time. Mm. So um, it's basically all about how quickly they can evolve and adapt to different changes. Mm -hmm. So that's part of the research that I do here at the museum. So, for example, if there's temperature changes in the oceans, um, how quickly can they, you know, they evolve or perhaps move to someplace else? Uh, sharks are also, they live in all different types of environments. So they live in the deep, dark oceans. They live up at the top of the water, um, even sometimes in river systems wow. um, as well. And they also eat a wide variety of food, which mm. you've just kind of touched on by looking at some of these uh, teeth here. Yeah. So, um, you know, if you've um, got a very specific type of food that you eat based on the shape of your teeth, you're probably not going to last very long if there's some sort of extinction event. Mm -hmm. But if you're something like the Hybodus or the Port Jackson, where you've got the different types of teeth, you're much more likely to survive mm. because you can change your diet based on the type of food around. So it's a number of different factors. Basically, are they able to move to different waters um, if there's temperature changes um, and uh, slightly adjust their diets um, as well? And so the difference between sharks and the rest of the fish, is that what you mentioned earlier about them not having bones or is there, is there any other kind of differences? Yeah, there's lots of different um, sort of small minor details, but basically you have the bony fish. So that's things like if you've got a goldfish at home, um, cod, heron, things you might get from the fish and chip shop. Yeah. Um, and then you have the cartilaginous fishes. So their key feature is that their skeleton is made from cartilage rather than bone. So you've got the sharks, rays and chimeras. So that's your general grouping. Mm -hmm. And then within that, um, there's lots of finer details, like hundreds, actually thousands of small, <laughs> like little characters. Um, and that's what uh, we do here at the museum. Um, basically look at those fossils and that's how we can tell the difference between different species. Mm -hmm. Sometimes um, it's, it's very obvious what those differences are and other times it's quite subtle. So it's, it's, it's incredible to know that there's such like diversity as well when it comes to sharks in terms of what they eat and such. Um, so basically we've had a question through from Stacey just on that note who's asking you, um, what's the biggest shark specimen you've ever looked after here in the collections? Oh gosh, that's a good <laughs> question. It's a great um, question, thank you Stacey. Yeah, so can I do two? Yeah, of yeah, course. Because they kind of link. Yeah. And I've actually had one out recently yeah. um, for, um, for some other research. So if you give me two seconds, um, I'll go and uh, grab, I'll need to get a trawler yes. out for this one. But yeah, 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 go for it, go with for me. it. Yeah, no <laughs> worries, I'll start putting this one away. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for that question, Stacey. Um, and then we've also actually had another mystery specimen guest from Megan, who thinks that this could be a coprolite. Um, so coprolite, I think we've spoken about in previous shows as well, and it's a fossilised poo. Uh, so great guess, Megan. We'll come to the, the identity of this specimen at the end of the show. Um, but yeah, um, Emma's just gone to get the biggest specimen uh, that, that she's worked on here in the collections. And when we were talking earlier about the different adaptations of teeth, I can actually see between these two jaws we've seen that there's so much variety, even with the sharp teeth as well. So I was just talking to everyone while no, you were, no. you were gone. Please do. So <laughs> wow, that's huge. <laughs> yeah, so there's kind of two here. So I'll pop these out of the way for the moment. Yes. Um, so yeah, this is actually only part of the specimen. So this is basically its spine or the right. vertebral column. So what we've got here is each one of those um, sort of like little circles or 
half circles there, that's part of its vertebrae column. So right. if you were to run your hand up and down your spine, yes. you feel like little bumps. Yeah. So that's what we're talking about here. So each one of those is a little bump. And this specimen, when it's actually all laid out, um, is about six, seven metres in length. Wow, that's, that's <laughs> massive. It's pretty impressive. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah, so this is actually, as you can see, still in its plaster jacket. Yes, yeah. We had a look at some of these plaster jackets actually um, a couple weeks ago with Kieran in the uh, fossil prep lab. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. So, so it's great to see that, yeah, they're, they're being used on, on shark specimens as well as we were looking at dinosaur fossils. But yeah, this is... It's just huge. Yeah. <laughs> so this one is from Morocco and is about 50 million years old. Mm. Um, so it's pretty impressive. And we've got some of their teeth um, as well. But this one is the ancestor, or the great, 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 great uh, grandparent <laughs> to probably quite a famous big shark that some okay. people might know about. Yeah. And what might that one be? Well, um, <laughs> I shall pull up the teeth. So... Um, this is the tooth from the biggest shark that has ever lived and is a shark called Megalodon. Yes, I think people might have heard of that one, yeah. <laughs> yeah, especially with a certain trailer, I guess, getting released <laughs> yeah. recently. So yeah, Megalodon, or Otodus Megalodon, to give yeah. it its proper name. Um, Megalodon actually means big tooth. Right. And you can kind of see it's like literally the same size as my hand. Look. Do you mind if we push this one yeah, down yeah. a bit so I can get a closer look at the megalodon? Um, what I'll do as well. So we think of great whites as being quite large sharks around today. Um, that is a great white tooth. Wow. In, in this hand here. And I, I remember in the show that we did with, uh, with James in the fish collection, I held the shark jaws, the great white shark jaws, and they were... They were like this big. They were big enough to fit me in. So how big would the Megalodon shorts be? <laughs> uh, yeah, they're very impressive. So probably would have been about maybe two and a half metres across in diameter. Ooh. Two metres, so yeah, very <laughs> impressive. I think you and I would be like a little snack for it. <laughs> yeah, well, what did it eat if it was so big? Yeah, so it's a great question. So um, we can also work out from the fossils that we can find from Megalodon and what other fossils are found in the same layers. Yeah. Not only that, we also have fossil evidence. So it's a bit like detectives, like a murder Ooh. investigation. Yeah. So we can, we've can we actually got fossil whale bones where Megalodon teeth are, you know, being biting into it. Right. Um, scratch mark, bite mark, sorry. Um, and also sometimes their teeth are still slightly, the like, tip of the tooth are broken off wow. and still embedded in the bone. So we can um, work out not only from the fossils around these megalodon specimens we can find, but also from the whale carcasses that have been found in other, other fossils as well. Right, so like whales and, and other things that lived in the ocean, I'm assuming. Yeah. yeah, basically it was a very big shark, probably about 15 to 18 metres oh, in wow. length. <laughs> so longer than a double-decker bus. <laughs> That's so big. I, get, I can see why people are so... It is, it's, it's one of those animals that's existed that is just so like out of our kind of reference, like great white sharks are huge to us. So it's something that when you see the size difference here, it's just like, wow, that's so big. And yeah. wh when did it live? What, at what point in, in Earth's history? So um, it came, kind of came onto the scene, it started to evolve. So the ancestor told us um, yes. Oblicus, which was what the, we were just looking at, that evolved about 50 million years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and then gradually over that time, um, this um, to lineage or basically family of mega tooth sharks um, started to evolve. They gradually got bigger and bigger. So about 20-ish million years ago was when Megalodon kind of first came on the scene. Right, okay. So that's um, way after the, the, the most of the dinosaurs went extinct, which was about 66 million years yeah. ago. Obviously birds are still alive today, but in terms of big dinosaurs like T-Rex, they wouldn't have coexisted with Megalodon no. then. Okay, because I think a lot of people do th have that image in their head of like a, yeah, of those, because they, they're all extinct, they're coexisting, but they were separated by a huge amount of time. Yeah, a massive amount of time, yeah. Right, and um, you mentioned earlier that there are some kind of films and books and stuff that portray Megalodon as still being alive. Is it possible? I'm afraid not. <laughs> I mean, I would love to see a I mean, real-life Megalodon. I mean, I'm pleased, Megalodon. actually. Yeah. <laughs> definitely from a distance. Yeah. Uh, but Megalodon's definitely extinct. Okay. It went extinct about three, maybe three and a half million years ago. Mm -hmm. um, 
we're still not 100% sure exactly why, yeah. but as with any extinction event, it's always a, um, several different reasons. Yeah. So possibly due to climate change, it was getting much colder back then. Mm. Megalodon like really warm tropical waters. Uh, there was competition from other animals, big large animals that lived in the sea at the same time. Um, yeah, so a number of different factors really. Um, but we only ever find fossilised megalodon teeth. And mm. as I mentioned at the start, with sh uh, sharks always replacing their teeth, we would find recent uh, megalodon That's jaws. That's a very good point, because they'd be going through them so often, yeah. Um, and I think also something that large, 15 metres, living in the oceans, we would definitely know it about it. It would need it. to eat the whales of today, and we'd yeah. find that evidence of, of whales being eaten by megalodon. So, yeah. Uh, well, that kind of Stacey had asked also, do you think there are any megalodons left? So we've, we have answered for that. So, uh, so yeah, not, no, there aren't any left. No, I'm no. afraid, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've had another guest in for the mystery specimen from James. Is it an intestine? Intestines are stone, sorry. <laughs> oh, that's quite, that's a really good guess. So a bit yeah. like a gastrolith. Yeah, yeah gastrolith. What's that? It's so some useful. animals, um, even today, they'll swallow stones mm -hmm. to help um, digest foods um, in their stomachs. Yeah. And some often you can actually find them preserved um, in the fossil record as well. So that's a really great guess, that one. Okay, great. So yeah, keep your guesses coming for the mystery specimen and the amount of teeth. We've got a few minutes left, so we'll still hold off on revealing what those are for a little bit. Um, I noticed that you also brought some other teeth over with ah, this yes. megalon tooth. It'd be cool to look at those. Yeah, so um, again, the reason why I really like these teeth. Um, so scientifically, they're not hugely important. And to be honest, this is typically how you'll find shark's teeth, broken right. up, um, round down. Um, Still so shiny down, down. though as well, yeah. like the ones we saw earlier, amazing. Yeah. So that's um, quite typical. So scientifically, there's probably not a huge amount of information we can glean from these specimens. Yeah. But historically, um, these specimens are actually really important to the museum, the Natural History Museum. Right. And it's all due to this label here. Yeah. So this is a label um, handwritten by Sir Richard Owen, who was the first director of the Natural yeah. History Museum. So for us here that work at the museum, uh, you know, it's a really nice link to the, um, that past. Yeah, wow, that's, that's fantastic. So that's his, that's his handwriting right yeah. there. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah, and we've got it protected in this like, little film sleeve yeah. that just helps um, enables us to handle it as that's well. That's so great. And I've noticed also with the teeth, they're actually a different colour mm. to this one here. Why is that? Were they, were they a different colour when they were alive? What's going on here? Because that's really dark and then yeah. these are quite a bit... Brighter, yeah. Yeah, that's a really great question. And actually is something that um, I do get asked quite a lot. So um, the black tooth isn't because it was rotting right. or anything like that. It's just all to do with the sediment it was found in. So this megalodon tooth here was found um, off the coast of America in a kind of like mudstone. So if you think oh. of mud, it's very dark in colour. Yeah. Whereas these teeth here were found um, near Egypt. And that was found in quite sandy sediment. So imagine sand on the beach is quite mm. light in colour. So during the fossilisation process, what happens is the different layers of rocks, so whether that be mud, sand, um, lots of different sediment gets piled up. Water starts to go through those, um, that, that mud and sediment. And then because the minerals inside, they're all slightly different, you know, different colours. Mm. And that can then impact the colour of the fossil. Um, over that fossilization right, process yeah. over millions of years. So that's why they're slightly different colors, just purely because this was in mud, very dark in color. This was in sand, so very um, light colored um, minerals. Right, got it. Okay, that's really, really interesting. Because yeah, when we were looking at dinosaur fossils as well, I noticed that a lot of them were different colors and it, we didn't really get to ask that question. So that's really great, thank you. Um, we got a couple minutes left. I think it'd be great to check out one more specimen and I'd like, um, maybe you can choose. So you mentioned earlier there were things called dermal denticles that we found that you can find from fossilised sharks, but lots of other stuff. So do you want to pick one last specimen that we can look at before we oh, reveal gosh. the mysteries? Right. No pressure. No pressure. <laughs> okay, I'll pick one that's a little bit different to anything else that we've spoken about Sounds so good. far. Yeah, shall we do Excellent. that? Okay, yeah. <laughs> I'll, go, I'll go off and grab Excellent. that one. I'll help kind of put these in here as well. So yeah, that's so amazing. We get a close look at these as well. I don't know if you, this will pick up, but when you look at the great white shark's tooth, you can notice there's like little kind of 
jagged lines along the edge and you can actually see those on the megalodon teeth as well. So when Emma was talking about the different diets, that probably means that they had similarish diets. I was just looking at the jagged lines on the teeth. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. I've learned something. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So I've brought along this one. Wow. Um, so yeah, it looks quite odd and a bit different to I think anything else that we've shown. So again, this is from a specimen from the Jurassic period, so the Jurassic Coast down in Lyme Regis. Yeah. And this is actually a dorsal fin spine from the Hybodus wow. shark that we mentioned earlier. Yeah. So that's the, so I've also brought another little friend. Okay, nice. <laughs> uh, this is Ralphetta, my little friend here. <laughs> so this is a dogfish that's been washed up and it got dried out in the sun for a bit too long. Right. Um, but you can see it's got these little spikes on its yeah. back. So that's um, that sort of dorsal fin spine, and um, that's probably used for protection because these sharks live at the bottom on the seabed mm. typically, lots of other predators swimming up um, and around above it. So you can sort of see the size difference. So obviously, this Hybodus shark here would have been quite a big shark. Yeah, it's huge. Probably about six, seven meters in length. So this kind of serrations that you can see these little lines, mm. this is the part that would be exposed. So like on this shark here, yeah. And this part here that's kind of smooth, it's not shiny or has the lines, that would be the part that is actually covered um, in the skin itself. Right. That's so cool. That, that, yeah, that's absolutely massive. Um, one last question before we kind of get to the, the mysteries <laughs> here. Um, uh, what's the smallest shot? in the collection, because we've spoken about the biggest things, but that's oh, quite gosh. small. Does yeah. it get much smaller than that? Yeah, so um, the smallest shark around today is the dwarf lantern shark. Yes. Um, it's very cute. It's only about maybe 20 centimetres oh, wow. or so in size, yeah. so it's quite cute, it's very yeah. small. Tiny. Yeah, it's very tiny. <laughs> uh, Fossilised ones, oh, jings. Um, some <laughs> of the shark specimens we do have, as I said, it's rare that we find the complete fossilised ones. Yeah. But we do occasionally find, uh, we find lots of their teeth and some of them are actually only a few millimetres in size. Yeah. So we actually have to use a microscope in order to, to see them. Wow. So I've got lots of those ones um, around. So they're from some of the sharks. That's incredible. Maybe about, yeah, 50 centimetres or so okay. um, in, in length. So, so we've got fossils of ones that are about 50 centimetres long, but the, the smallest one we know about is actually alive today that we yeah, know about. I know about, yeah. Okay, excellent. <laughs> well, thank you so much for that. Um, and hope that answers your question, Lizzie. Um, so let's get round to the identity of our mystery yep. specimen here. So uh, we've had some great guests. We've had teeth. We've had the thing that I could barely pronounce, which was intestinal stone. Uh, we also had, when you were collecting something from over there, we had the session that could be poo as well. Uh, so would you like to reveal what it is? Well, a drum roll, da -la -la. <laughs> uh, Whoever guessed poo yes. or coprolite is actually correct. So very well done, if that was you. Very good. So <laughs> what we've got here is a fossilized poo or a coprolite to give it a scientific name yeah. from a shark. Uh, but what's particularly exciting about coprolites um, is that we can sometimes see, look inside them. So whether we cut them wow. in half or put them into like a CT scanner, it's like a powerful X-ray that allows us to virtually dissect things. Sometimes what we can find are little teeth, scales, little bones. Wow. So again, we can work out what these ancient sharks were actually feeding upon simply by looking at their poo. That's amazing. So a very valuable fossil because yeah. it can tell you so much Absolutely. about an animal. Yeah. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for getting that out. It, it looks, to be honest, if you were going down <laughs> on the beach, like it, it, it looks like a rock. So it takes some, some yeah. extreme kind of training and dedication to understand what you're looking at here. So that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, no, great guess to who guessed coprolite. Um, and then also we had uh, our other mystery, which was how many teeth are in this box? Yeah, so um, I think somebody actually got it more or less spot on in, really? in the guesses. So yeah, I can't remember who it was, uh, but yeah, there's about 30,000 teeth wow. in this box. So well done again, if that was you. Um, so yeah, this is a, bit, a lifetime supply. So depending 30, on the species- in one lifetime. Yeah. They and how long can they live for? Um, again, sort of for how long is a piece of string? So some Fair of enough. them, it's just a few <laughs> years. Other sharks, it might be 50, 60, 60 wow. years. Um, so it depends on what they're feeding on. Yeah. So um, sometimes they might replace them every couple of weeks. Other times it might be every couple of months. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so if you're one shark producing on average 30,000 teeth, 
the chances are few of them are going to become fossils. Yeah. So that's why shark's teeth are some of the most common fossils that we can find today. Well, there you go. And, they, and they're also really cool fossils to find. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You can learn so much from them. As we've learned, for like different types of teeth, you can learn what they eat. And yeah, they just look cool as well. Yeah. <laughs> so a top tip if you want to try and find some of your own shark's teeth yeah. um, is to go try and find some rocks where um, you was previously like a marine. Um, sort of coastal system. So some place yeah. like Lyme Regis, um, up in the Yorkshire coast as well, um, down in Sheppey and things like that. Look for things that are shiny. Okay, yeah. So like that might be um, either fish scales or it could be the teeth. So they've got this kind of sheeny, yeah. um, kind of shiny luster to them. Yeah. Um, so if you've got a good sunny day, go in the morning or towards the end of the day. Um, but if you go at noon when the sun's directly above, it might be a bit more difficult to find. Okay, well, there you go. Top tips to find fossilised shark teeth. And if people do find them, do you re recommend they bring them to the museum to be identified or anything like that? Yeah, there's lots of resources available online. Um, but if you're not too sure about um, what's there, we've got a fantastic identification service right. um, here at the museum. And they're always um, eager and um, able to help out. That's very true. And actually, that leads me on to where we're going to be visiting for next week. <laughs> but for now, I say thank you so much for letting us explore the shark collection with you. It's been an absolute pleasure. And I don't want to take up any more of your time. So I'll let yep. you get back no, to No, it's been great. Work. And thank you very much to everybody at home. <laughs> thank you for joining us. Yeah. Um, so now, yeah, in our next show, uh, which will be sadly the final episode of season two of Hidden Treasures, um, we'll be going at the same time, 12.30 p.m. British summer time on next Tuesday, so that's the 16th of May, and we'll be visiting the Angela Marmot Centre. So those of you who tuned in a few weeks ago, you'll see that we went down there before. Um, uh, we were unable to join our expert scientists, but they're gonna be there next week. Um, so that's the UK, that's the Centre for UK uh, Nature, uh, and it's where all the identification services happen here at the museum. So we'll be unboxing some specimens that have been sent in from the general public, but also exploring the UK reference collections uh, with the scientists there, uh, which, are spe uh, which are collections that you can actually come and visit yourselves if you book ahead in advance for that, uh, for research. So that's going to be super exciting and a great way to end the season. So make sure you tune in for that. Um, and also get your guesses in for whatever the mystery specimen is going to be in there as well. Um, so yeah, let us know what you think of Hidden Treasures by commenting down below uh, or in the chat box if you're still watching on live. Uh, but also make sure that you follow us on Twitter and Instagram and TikTok on our social media and let us know what you think about our content there as well. And make sure that you're subscribed to the Natural History Museum YouTube channel uh, because along with Hidden Treasures, even though we're ending this season, next week there's tons of other content that we're bringing to you. So make sure you subscribe and hit the bell notification icon and as always make sure that you check out any episodes you've missed with hidden treasures so we've got a whole playlist of season one and season two on our youtube channel as well but looking forward to seeing you next week um, and bye for now thank you so much for joining